please don't ask him any tough questions. I uh, did not participate with Mo Harris. Uh, concussion still limited with Trent Williams. Uh, we're just managing his reps, that's all. We had to put him down there, though. I know he's a practice squad guy, but Capri Bibbs, has he been working? Uh, he's sick. Sorry. Yes, he's got some bug or something. Um, on the defensive line, what's your ideal vision for that? Is it a rotation? Is it a couple of those guys staying in there for full series? What do you want that to look like? Well, you want to keep them fresh. They're big men, and uh, they play better fresh. But obviously, Payne has uh, proven that... Uh, he's pretty good. And Jonathan Allen, we want to keep in there as much as possible. Matt has come back from his injury. Ziggy, I think they'll be subbing in and out a little bit. Uh, so we have a pretty good group of guys in there. Who, who do I miss? It's one, two, three. Settle and settle. Thank you. Settle? I hope so. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Is uh, Harris going to be inactive on Sunday, most likely? Harris, what? Is he going to be inactive? Mostly. Well, oh, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. He's still in the, getting checked out. I know you guys published unofficial depth chart the other day. Had Danny Johnson as your, your lead kick returner. Is that the plan back there? And uh, how did you guys know when you brought him in that that was something that he could potentially do? Yeah, we knew coming in. We uh, we want to try to address the return situation. And, and Danny and Stroh both uh, had experience returning kicks. So uh, they were high on our list. Danny, luckily, we got him as a priority free agent. And obviously, we drafted Stroh. Uh, and then Trey Quinn also had some experience returning punts at uh, SMU, so uh, we kind of addressed that, you know, so we don't have to go to uh, somebody else. When you look at Danny and Stroman as potential returners, is there enough room, you think, on your, your active roster to keep them both active and have six corners up? Uh, maybe. We shall see. Depends on how many linebackers we keep up and all that. Uh, Chris and Alex were talking yesterday about how important practice reps have been these past couple of weeks because of how the preseason went. How, do, how would you characterize these last two weeks of practice out there? Who said that? Uh, uh, Chris Thompson and Alex oh, Smith. Yeah, well, I'd like to think every rep's important. We, we have a method for our madness, and every rep we take is uh, scrutinized and coached up, and, and it's, the goal is to make us better and, uh, and, and also work on our conditioning and Discipline and all that good stuff. So I think every rep that we take out here, whether it's a walkthrough or a practice rep or individual, is very, very important to our success in the future. So uh, I think uh, the guys have done an excellent job the last two days of honing in on what we're trying to do uh, for the game Sunday uh, and uh, going from there. So we get a good group of practice, a lot of reps, and then watch a film, correct it, and then move on to the next day and different situations occur. So it's, it's very beneficial. Um, if, if Mo Harris can't go, would Trey Quinn be that fourth guy most likely? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, he, he's done great. And then, uh, obviously, Cam has a chance to be up on game day. We'll see. Okay, you mentioned the, uh, how many linebackers you may, you may keep. You just added another inside linebacker yesterday. Uh, how do you kind of see that rotation, particularly behind the two starters? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, big thing is Zach's been a little bit banged up with that oblique, but he's been cleared so far, so we uh, want to just add some more for depth with Kai's and, and uh, you know, but. I think with Zach and Mason, obviously Josh Harvey will play a lot, uh, and and uh, Vigil will get some reps in there, and we'll see about Sean Dion on teams and all that good stuff. Are you concerned with Zach that this is going to be some lingering issue, or do you feel like it's once it's gone, it's gone? Well, yeah. If we're concerned about lingering issues, then I probably wouldn't be able to sleep. So I think uh, I think we got it nipped in the bud. We we gave him plenty of rest. Uh, could be a little painful for him, but he's not on the report, so I think he's good to go. Josh Harvey had in camp played some nickel linebacker for you guys, and he obviously went out. Uh, but it looked like he was getting some work with the ones. Is that something that could be, we could potentially see this year, him coming in in sub packages because of his ability in, in kind of in college? Yeah, cover I think that's on. why we drafted him because his length and his speed and the ability to cover tight ends and backs. And uh, he's gotten a much done a much better job as far as being in a core and playing in the run game also. So he's not just a pass guy, you know. So uh, I, I th I've been impressed with Josh Harvey. Um, Still learning, still getting better, but uh, he definitely has the length to cover good people like David Johnson possibly out of the backfield or their tight end, Jermaine Gresham, or whoever it might be. Adrian said yesterday that uh, he feels really good when he's got the ball in his hand, but there's still some intricacies like two-minute and other things that he's still kind of getting up to speed on. Where do you see him at uh, right now a couple weeks into his Redskins tenure? Yeah, we'll see. We'll probably be a situational guy. Uh, you know, I don't think he'll be in the two-minute situation, I hope, but uh, – but you never know. He's learning everything. You know, it's hard to come in here and learn a new terminology. We wanted to focus in on a certain group of plays. 
uh, and then uh, branch off from there slowly but surely. Uh, we have a couple other guys like Rob and Smaja and Chris, obviously, that can handle those other roles for him until he gets up to speed. But uh, he's, got a, he's got a package of plays that he feels real good about. Jay, when you self-evaluated the run game struggles last year, was it more just injuries, not having guys on the offensive line, and also running the ball, or were there other things that stood out to you? Well, a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, you know, offensive line in and out. You know, the continuity offensive line. You know, our tight ends struggle a little bit blocking at the point from time to time. Sometimes all the different backs that we played had something to do with it. Uh, receiver blocking. Sometimes a bad call against a bad front, and uh, we have to do a better job of trying to get our run calls against optimal looks, and uh, if we don't get the optimal look, we might have to throw it. But, uh, you know, the running game is, is very, very uh, difficult to point your finger at one pers- person or position group. It's a total team effort. The quarterback's got to be involved in it, carrying out his fake uh, or uh, getting us to the right play. Tight ends, obviously, the receivers got to block secondary people from that time to time, and obviously the linemen. Jay, a lot of young guys on the team. Uh, this is their first uh, regular season game. Do you monitor their reps as far as uh, they haven't played a full, you know, regular season game yet? Do you monitor their reps and, and see where they are as, you know, you get through the first quarter, second quarter, et cetera? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how they're doing. You know, it's uh, hopefully the roof will be shut over there and it'll be cool. So that shouldn't be an issue. But I think we're in pretty good shape. But if somebody looks a little winded, that's why we have the good depth, uh, our backups, defensive linemen, linebackers, safeties, corners, uh, tight ends, offensive linemen. Uh, running backs, I think we feel pretty good about our depth and receivers, so uh, we'll keep everybody as fresh as we can. Uh, Rob Kelly has essentially been bumped down on the depth, depth chart twice this year. You know, you drafted guys, he got hurt, and then you brought in Adrian. How has how is he handled the whole kind of up and down thing, and what do you see his role being, or especially early in the year? Yeah, I think Rob has handled it like a pro. You know, I think he understands that nothing's ever going to be handed out to him being a free agent from Tulane. That's what he thinks, and uh, but he continues to come out here and work and produce. So the last preseason game, I thought he was excellent, um, fighting for his job, fighting for uh, playing time. He did a great job, and he's going to be used uh, without a doubt. Uh, I don't know that extent of that use, but we'll, we'll have to see as, how the game goes on. But throughout the course of the 16-game season, I anticipate Rob uh, being a big benefit to this football team. Jay, is there any difference in preparing for a coach who's a defensive-minded coach or a coach who's been a defensive coordinator and, you know, moving into a head coach? Is there, is there something different in the way you prepare for that? No. You know, I just try to find out where they came from, um, what they're good at, what their specialty is, and you study that, and then you have to go on and uh, flip it to the other side of the ball and who's running a show over there, and that's uh, Coach McCoy. So you have to kind of study what he does and, and go from there. But still, there's uh, so much of the unknown. You know, they have a whole offseason to watch tape. Being a head coach now for the first time, he might have some new ideas that he wanted to use that maybe Coach Revere didn't want him to use. So uh, you never know. Same with Coach McCoy. Uh, so uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. But we just have to be fundamentally sound, and uh, hopefully our uh, X's and O's match up and are sound against whatever they throw out at us. Uh, have you picked uh, captains yet? Captains? No, not yet. Probably do that uh, tomorrow. Are you going to rotate weekly, or do you think you're going to pick a set for? I'll probably pick a set. Maybe have one rotate. Got it. Probably pick four and then rotate one. Got it. Thanks, coach. Yep. All right. Stay put, guys. Oh. Does the mic? Hello, everyone. Ah, shaved. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, the run defense was kind of a weakness last year. Just a lot of emphasis put on that. Um, how helpful is it to kind of face David Johnson in the first game? Kind of a good test for you guys. Just yeah, very good uh, running back. Uh, he did a great job last year and the year before. But, uh, you know, and last year he only played a couple of games. Uh, from, but from our standpoint, a uh, good running back, you know, we got to make sure we tackle, tackle well on Sunday and, uh, you know, play team defense so everybody knows where exactly they're supposed to be or fits are and uh, try to swarm the running back because he's a good one, uh, good in pass catching. He's a receiver. He could be out at the backfield and then running the ball. So uh, he's a talented player, and we got to – it's one of the musts for us. New coaching staff, new offense. How has it been trying to prepare for – what you think they might do? Yeah, it's always tough because you know the first off, uh, the first 
you know, it's a, it's the first time that they're playing an, uh, an opening game. You know, they had a little bit in the preseason, seeing a little bit of snaps of what they do. So, you know, that's what we're trying to take from what they did in the preseason and then, uh, you know, what he's done in Denver before and, you know, from years past. But overall, uh, you know, they've been a productive offense and uh, we're looking for a big fight. Does Johnson's route running ability and, and the, the fact that he can run every route in the route tree was wide receiver in college change who you might cover him with? Maybe a DB versus a linebacker. And then obviously, how could Josh Harvey Clemens, a guy who's got experience at both, factor well, that's, into that? I think that's the biggest thing is you got to, you know, who's going to cover him, you know, from uh, being out in a wide receiver position. And, uh, you know, we have our things that we're going to do. But, uh, you know, it is an option for them to put him outside and, and you know, run the whole route tree, like you said. So, uh, you know, we got to make sure we get pressure on the quarterback and then make sure we cover him up because he is a talented football player. Can I ask why you shaved? Uh, it's summer. It's training camp's over. <laughs> uh, you're putting a lot of trust in some young guys, uh, Fabian Moreau, um, Nicholson, and um, those guys back there. What, what is it that you've seen in this training camp this offseason that, that gives you the confidence in those guys? I think uh, overall, you know, from a communicational standpoint, I think they've done a great job. Uh, we've got to continue to do that. You know, we've got seven rookies and I think five or six second-year players on the defense. So, you know, it's a decent amount of guys that are young. But, uh, you know, from a communicational standpoint, it's, it's uh, vital for everybody to communicate and be on the same page. You know, like I can always tell you, I don't care what we call, as long as we're all on the same page, we'll have success. So, uh, you know, they've been doing a good job on the back end. Larry Fitzgerald last year, and I'm just curious, from a priority standpoint, what, what's the way that you, you, you try to defend him the best? Oh, well, try to put the best player you have on him, you know, basically, you know, but overall, you know, Larry's still the talented guy. Uh, he can run the whole route tree. The quarterback does a good job of trying to f find him and locate him. Uh, you know, he's just, he bodies you out. You know, he's always had that uh, ability to do that. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're excited to go up against him. Rick, speaking of all those young guys, you know, between the defensive line and on the back secondary, a lot of young guys on the defense. Is there value to that immediately, number one? And number two, um, is there even more value, like, looking ahead down the road as far as letting those guys kind of grow together? I think definitely. You know, we've got a lot, a lot of young guys on the D-line and even in the secondary, you know, from our standpoint. So we've got some young guys that have some talent, and now we've got to just play together as a defense and uh, make sure uh, that we bring it on Sunday. Yeah, going back a few, get, a few days ago, you, you guys let go of, uh, of Lanier, a guy who you know had five sacks and basically half a season, brought in Caleb Brantley. What's your feeling on why that switch was made? Well, the switch was made, I think, uh, for right now, you know, with the back and back up and the depth we had at uh, the D-line, you know, I think we felt like, uh, you know, Anthony had a chance to make it and then kind of just kind of fizzled out a little bit at the end. Uh, and then we picked up uh, Brantley, who was uh, – a, a very good, talented player, uh, and uh, we're excited for him to have him in the building. But, uh, you know, decisions are decisions made in this business, and, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you got to move forward and move on. Do you think you improved against the run with that with that? Move? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, I think uh, we're excited to have him here, and we'll see what he can do. You got to talk to Jay about that. <laughs> that's that's up to him, not to me. All right, thanks, guys.